And finally, new rule, the next person during this pandemic who says we're all in it together must work a shift at Grubhub. Half the country is home in their comfy clothes ordering takeout, and the other half is out in the cold delivering it. So stop with the in it together bullshit. <laughs> We're in this together is the new thank you for your service. Just something to say to the people doing the dirty work so we can feel better about not doing it ourselves. And even before the pandemic hit, America was already well into being a gig economy, which sounds kind of hip, like you're in a rock band. <laughs> Except you're not in a rock band, you're delivering hot chicken, and it doesn't <laughs> cover your rent. Even side hustle sounds kind of cool like you're a private eye who runs drugs, but <laughs> really you're an Uber driver who also makes jewelry out of seashells. <laughs> you can call it remote work, but what's really remote is any chance of getting health insurance. What are Uber and Lyft really but Americanized rickshaws? It's not like it's what anyone wants to do. No one ever had a friend throw up in their back seat and said, gosh, I hope someday I can make a career out of this. <laughs> <laughs> but in the gig economy, everyone is a freelancer, and finding work is the virtual equivalent of hanging out in the parking lot at Home Depot. Have a spare room you don't mind strangers fucking in? Rent it on Airbnb. <laughs> Got some old Star Trek stuff from your childhood? Sell it on eBay and ship it to some 45-year-old guy's mom's house. Even famous people are not above scrounging for cash on the site Cameo, where you can get D-list celebrities to wish you happy birthday or get well soon or tell you a joke. And then there's OnlyFans, which last year swelled from 12 million users to 85 million. And now I'm sure there's some boomers out there saying, Bill, OnlyFans, what, what the hell is that? Oh, don't worry, it's just the side hustle your daughter's using to pay off her college debt. <laughs> no, don't worry. It's, please, it's, it's just a platform where you can share recipes or maybe your poetry. Yeah, you can do that, but no one does. It's women showing their vaginas to a webcam so men can masturbate. I'm sorry, I'm being crude. What I meant was OnlyFans is a social media site where over a million creators <laughs> provide exclusive content to 85 million subscribers <laughs> who are masturbating. <clears throat> Because apparently that's what our economy revolves around now. Losers in their weak old underwear paying poor, desperate web girlfriends to fake an orgasm while a toddler cries in the next room. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. <laughs> According to the website Strip Chat, this kind of thing has become so routine that there's actually now a most popular time of day to take a break from your busy schedule and rub one out. And that's between 3 and 4 in the afternoon, what I call fappy hour. <laughs> Jesus, forget Harriet Tubman. They ought to put this guy on the 20. <laughs> I'm, <clears throat> I'm looking forward to the day when <laughs> OnlyFans merges with Cameo to become Only Cameo. <laughs> where you can order those has-been celebs to do freaky shit. That's when we'll know our economy has hit rock bottom, when you can make Ian Ziering open a bottle of beer with his asshole. <laughs> and he does it because, hey, anything for a fan. I'm afraid Valentine's Day this year will just be another reminder of how brutal this lockdown has been for single people. Over half of 18 to 34-year-olds don't have a steady romantic partner, and they're losing precious dating time. Women's biological clocks are ticking. Guys are balding. <laughs> In the last 50 years, the share of Americans who live alone has doubled, which begs the question, if single people are such a large part of this country now, why do our political and economic policies always still revolve around families? Just once, I'd like to hear a politician say, I'm Congressman Harry Spooner, and I'm not for working families. 
I'm for people whose babies ended up in the reservoir tip. <laughs> Last week, Mitt Romney literally said this. He said, American families are facing greater financial strain. We have not reformed our family support system in nearly decade, three decades, and our changing economy has left millions of families behind. Now is the time to renew our commitment to families as they take on the most important work any of us will ever do, raising our society's children. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Is any... Uh... Does any politician ever get how insulting this is to such a large swath of people? You like kids and family? Great, you do you. But for millions of others, getting a good night's sleep, not sharing the remote or changing dirty diapers, never having to have a relationship talk or listen to a passive-aggressive sigh, <laughs> priceless.